kedua terakhir. Okay, yeah, so I'm a PhD student in, uh, at the Leiden Observatory. My name is Leiden Bogaert, and I'll be talking to you tonight about the research that I'm doing for my PhD, looking at stars forming in very distant galaxies. And the question, or the topic of our research is the following. We're looking at the fuel for star formation in a distant universe. So last September, I was in Bernal, in Chile, and this is uh, one of the places where we have our big telescopes that we use to study distant galaxies. And this one in particular is called the Very Large Telescope, which you can see here on the mountain top. It consists actually of four different telescopes which can work together or work individually. <coughs> and each of these telescopes has a huge mirror, eight meters, which allows us to uh, look very deep into the universe. What is cool is you, if you go there as an astronomer is that you, you know, you spend all the night at the telescope, so during the day you actually sleep. And you stay in this hotel, that it's called the Residencia, and some of you might recognize this hotel because it's actually featured in the James Bond movie, Quantum of Solace. Um, it grew up there, it, it's still there, you know, it's used by astronomers, and that's where you stay during the day while you observe during the night. Um, but I was very excited when I first went there because the night sky in Paranal is very dark. And if you live in the Netherlands, like me, um, you know that our night sky is not always very impressive. So I was very excited to go out the first night and have a look at this really dark sky. But as you can see, the hotel is kind of sunken into the slope of the desert. So when you come out, you kind of walk out through this tunnel out of the hotel. And when you walk out, you see something like this. Um, I didn't take this picture myself, but immediately you see all kinds of beautiful things. So this is Paranal again. Here is the telescopes down here somewhere is the hotel. But over top is the beautiful night sky that you get when it's really dark and there's no moon. You can see this band of stars here, which is the Milky Way. You see these fuzzy patches, which are nearby galaxies. You see these kinds of things like these, which are globular clusters. And you can see this all with the naked eye. It's really very impressive. So what I want you to focus on for tonight is this thing. So if you were able to, you know, look at all directions of the sky at once, which you can't, but we can do this with telescopes all around the world, we can make a 360 picture of the night sky. And if you do that, and I've said to this, on the Milky Way, you see this. This is the Milky Way. This is our galaxy. The galaxy in which the Sun is one of the 100 billion stars. And we're kind of seeing, seeing this edge on, and we can't see it anyway, any different way. But if it were possible to look from up top, it would look like something like this. So this is another galaxy, this is M83, but we think this galaxy looks something like the Milky Way. And so this galaxy is like a spiral structure, it has 100 billion stars roughly, and if this were a Milky Way, our sun is somewhere out here, so we kind of look up, we kind of look in like that. That's why we see this, this cliche line. So the night sky in Paranel is beautiful, but about 25 years ago, astronomers wondered, it's like, okay, but there are places between the stars where we don't really see anything. What do we see if we would look there and we would just look and look and look for a very long time? Well, if you're a regular visitor of astronomy on tap, um, you actually know the answer to this question. You know what we will see. Because last February, uh, a colleague of mine, Michael Seda, actually talked about this. And he told you that we looked for a very long time at a very small patch of the sky, about this big, uh, for 10 days in a row. And we collected light. And if you do that, you get this picture. And this picture is what we call the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. And this is one of the deepest images we have of the night sky. Each fuzzy patch you see in here is a galaxy, and there's over 10,000 galaxies in this field. So not everything is a galaxy, so some things are stars, which you can see here with these spikes on, on them. But all these other patches are galaxies. So when you look 
deep and far out into the universe, you can see that the universe is filled with galaxies, just like our own Milky Way. Well, to an astronomer like me, that raises a lot of questions. It's like, okay, but you know, Milky Way is just one of the, all these galaxies. Where does it come from? How do these galaxies come into being? How do they grow? And particularly the question I'm interested in, what, is it, what fuels this growth? So what we do as astronomers is that we take these images and we look really far back. And when we look far back, because the light from these distant galaxies takes time to reach us, we also look back in time. So we see the universe as it was a long time ago. We can basically look back in time to when the universe was very young. So if we, here, if we are here on the right and we look back, we look back, we try to look back all the way to the beginning of the universe or with the Big Bang and try to trace back this evolution of the population of galaxies up until the present where our own Milky Way is. We look back in time to see these galaxies grow. So, I've told you about galaxy growth, but you might wonder, what, what do you mean with galaxy growth? How do galaxies grow? If we look at a galaxy like this, we don't really see anything change. If I were to look at this galaxy tomorrow, or next year, or maybe in a hundred years, we will see very little difference in these, in these galaxies. But still we know that they grow. And we know that because they are forming new stars. So let me zoom in on one part of this galaxy, right here close to the center on this spiral arm that you see there. Now in this picture, you're starting to see what I'm talking about. So here in the blue light, all the way around, you see stars in this galaxy. You see this dark stuff which is blocking the starlight. This is the gas and dust between the stars. But you're also seeing this bright red hue everywhere, surrounding this blue here. And these are the birthplaces of new stars. And what happens when new stars are born is that this gas, that is, this galaxy is filled with gas, and this gas, over time, collapses under its own gravity. And when this happens, it condenses and it condenses, and in the center of such a cloud, you will form stars and planets. And we think this is how our sun and our Earth has been formed inside our own Milky Way. So from large to small, clouds collapse and form planetary systems, like our own solar system. So let me zoom in to one of these, you know, these patches which you see here. If you look close up, this is not the same galaxy, this is in the small Magellanic cloud. You see something like this. And this is basically the end product of star formation. Here in the center, you see the new stars that are born, and surrounded, you see the cloud out of which they are born, which is being completely blown away by all the energy that is output from these young stars. Now, as an astronomer, I notice a few things in here. I see these young stars, I see this hot gas, which is there, and I still see the cold gas out of which they were born. Now, this cold gas, that is the fuel for star formation. This is the thing that we want to understand. <coughs> So galaxy growth happens over time, and we can't see this ourselves because it takes so long. But there is a way in which we can visualize this and in which we can understand this. And that is by looking at these galaxies in a simulation, in a computer simulation. Now we've also heard astronomy on tap talks about this. So just to understand this process and to understand what we are actually looking at, I want to show you a video of one particular simulation, which is called the Eagle Simulation, which is one part simulating a part of the universe and looking at the formation of galaxies from the beginning to now. So here you see what we call dark matter, which dominates the gravity. And if you put on time, time starts running, you can see the large-scale structure of the universe forming. These galaxies that we can see very far out follow this structure. You see this coming into place. And this structure will be the framework in which the galaxies will form. Now, if we change from gravity to gas, now you can see the formation taking place. So now we're looking at the gas in galaxies. So here's a galaxy that is starting to grow. In the galaxy itself, stars are forming. Also, nearby galaxies are joining in and merging. Now two big galaxies are joining together and flying past one another. And over time, this galaxy grows to become a large galaxy, such as our own Milky Way. So you can see it starts looking like a real galaxy. I think it's really fascinating, really amazing. It's amazing, right? This is how things in the universe evolve. So now we see a galaxy like our own Milky Way. 
But how do we study this process? You've seen all this gas come in, and you've seen all this gas in these galaxies, but how do we know that this actually corresponds to the real universe that we are studying? <coughs> well, to do that, we need to answer one question. We need to see this fuel for star formation, this cold gas in distant galaxies. So how do we see cold gas? Well, if we go back to our place, our birthplace of stars, you see the young stars here and the hot gas. And these young stars in the hot gas, which you saw in the spiral arms, are very bright and they shine very brightly. So if you look at the picture of the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, we can see these stars all the way out to the beginning of the universe. However, the cold gas that fuels the star formation is not bright at all. And it's actually very hard to see. Also, because it is so cold, um, we don't see this in, with, in light that we can see with our eyes, but we see it just like, you know, my body is like 38 degrees. As humans are, we can radiate in the infrared. This gas is minus 250 degrees. So this radiates in even longer wavelengths. And we need radio telescopes to see this. So the telescope we use is the Atacama Large Millimeter Ray, or short ALMA. And ALMA is not one telescope, but it's 66 individual telescopes, which are spread out through the desert in Chile which work together to form one big telescope with which we can see this cold gas. So here you can see a close-up of a few of these ALMA dishes. Now you might wonder, like, how does a picture of this look like? So here's a picture taken with the Hubble Space Telescope of a nearby galaxy that is actively forming stars. These are, this is the antennae galaxies. These are two of these galaxies which are merging. These are starting to merge. One is coming in here, another one is coming in there. Both galaxies are shaken up by the gravity and the gas is collided, collapsing and there's a lot of stars forming which you can see with all this red stuff out okay, there which I told you about. Now if you flip on a radio interferometry glasses and look at the cold gas, you see a picture like this. Now you might not think this is very impressive and this just looks like a bunch of red blobs, but this is really state-of-the-art work. Uh, to make an image like this is really time-consuming and now we are really seeing the, the actual places where the stars are born and the amount of fuel that is available for the growth of these galaxies. So what I work on in my research is doing this, but not doing this on galaxies that are local, but looking at this on this image, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, looking at the cold gas, but then all the way back in time. And we are currently, as we speak, undertaking a very large survey to map the entire Hubble Ultra Deep Field in cold gas. And what I want to show you tonight is the first part of the image, um, which is only released just a year ago, um, of the first part of this field. And that's the, and you might not think this image is impressive, but trust me, <laughs> this image is really very impressive. <laughs> this is what you see. And what you're seeing now is these red blobs that you see here and here and here. This is now the cold gas in galaxies, but these galaxies are so far away that the universe is only a fraction of its current age. This is gas in galaxies that are um, over 11 that are over 11 billion. Um, no, I should flip this around. The universe is 40 billion years old. This is gas in galaxies when the universe is only one, two, or three billion years old. So only a fraction of its current age. So let's get that. So just to zoom in, um, these are not ob observations done by ourselves, but this is a few pictures just to show you what do galaxies look like in cold gas in very early universe. And as you can see, we are with this Alma telescope now able to actually see the disks of galaxies over 12 billion years ago. Again, maybe a lot of red blobs, but we're seeing a few for star formation back in the early universe. So with this Alma data, we're understanding how galaxies grow through, to, through cosmic time and map into fuel for star formation throughout the history of the universe. And that's what I want to share with you tonight.